our body, um, when it's aligned physically, you can tune in to a resonance, a healing resonance. But it's not just the body, it's like also from the heart. Like how are you feeling, how, what's the emotion that's in your heart? Um, and where is it coming from? Uh, and you talked about the will. Is it a will that is coming from your ego? Or is it a will that's coming from your higher self, your wisdom? Welcome to this new episode and today I am with Ama Maha, formerly Manu. Yes. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Very nice. So Ama is an embodiment teacher and a body worker. And uh, how did you become an embodiment teacher and a body worker indeed? I would just basically go to my friends and touch naturally where it needed to be touched. And, and it was just natural in me. I didn't uh, need to learn it. I didn't uh, understand also that other people didn't um, understand it. So for, for me, it was not something, a gift that I could uh, work with. It was, for, I, I thought it was natural for everyone. So I didn't really go into that field when I was young, I, I went into architecture, actually. Oh, yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> um, but life actually brought me uh, back to this, um, to, to, to this gift that I have uh, in a very hard way uh, because I was not... Um, following my intuition. I was kind of like following, listening to what my mother wanted me to do, like what society is like, you need to work in an office, blah, blah, blah. But deep down inside it was kind of hurting me. I felt like that it was painful for me to not do what made me feel joyful. And so I was my, in my field, this state of, um, uh, of not being happy was creating accidents. So I had many accidents. I broke my legs, I, I had a head injury. Basically my whole right side of the body was broken. So I always had to come back to the healing, um, self-healing uh, energy and learning. So I, I learned a lot on my own. And then uh, eventually uh, circumstances uh, made it so I, I came to my true calling. Because yes. uh, I know that you shared previously with me that you had a, a very serious accident at some point where uh, you, were, you went through so much pain and uh, the only way basically to get better was to learn how to do it yourself uh, almost. Is that right? Yes. Um, with the help of with the help of others also like uh, you know Chinese medicine acupuncture uh, Cairo osteo uh, you know I, I tried a lot of things uh, but basically it came down to me doing the work um, you can get support from other therapists because it's very powerful another human being touching you it's it creates energy. Mm -hmm. So you can get the energy moving, but basically it comes down to you doing, embodying yourself, doing your, your work within your body, within your nervous system. And it comes from within you. So it's like no matter how many therapists you go see, if you just rely on the therapist to magically cure you, it might not happen. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, how important is also, you know, the will to get better, the psychological and emotional aspect of saying, okay, I'm really in a, in a, in a, in a dark place right now, and I got this vitality, this life force that I want to manifest through my body to get, get it better, get out of the hole. Our body is like a tuning fork. 
Mm -hmm. uh, tuning fork uh, has uh, spe specific hertz. If you've ever seen a tuning fork, it mm -hmm. has like one and then two, mm -hmm. two uh, sides coming out. Our body's made the same way. Basically, mm -hmm. if you look at our body, we have one center, like one core, and then two legs. One core, two arms. One bone, two bones. Uh, okay, I never thought about that. That's true, yeah? Right. So our body, um, when it's aligned physically, you can tune in to a resonance, a healing resonance. But it's not just the body. It's like also from the heart. Like how are you feeling? How, what's the emotion that's in your heart? Um, and where is it coming from? Uh, and you talked about the will. Is it a will that is coming from your ego? Or is it a will that's coming from your higher self, your wisdom, your um, pure essence? Because if it's a will that's coming from your ego, from a story that you think that that's how it should be, then you're cre you, you might be limiting yourself. You might be creating a tension because you're holding on to a story. So if you can tune in, uh, I work a lot with posture. Uh, hence, maybe this is also why I went to art, into architecture in the past because I, I, architecture of the buildings and the body, they're very much related. Um, but basically, if you can tune in to your perfect alignment, architecture, creating a space of um, creation in, in the Wuji, the Wuji uh, that's in Qigong, it's a, the, the space of non-resistance, mm -hmm. and you can get there with the body. And then you take all the elements, your breathing, your heartbeat, uh, sensing your energy field, your organs are very important. If you can bring everything together into this perfect attunement, vibration, mm -hmm. and Rest the mind, rest your ego, rest your stories. That's the challenging part. And this is where I actually bring prayer into this process. Because mm -hmm. with the prayer, very simple, I usually work with Oponopono, but mm -hmm. for other people, it can be different things. But for me, uh, I resonate with this one. Uh, so I can quiet my mind, quiet my ego, and just let the energy field resonate with, uh, or let my body resonate with the energy field, my heart resonate with everything surrounding, and the body can attune itself. Mm -hmm. Because my brain is not holding on to a story, holding on to a way that I think it should be. Mm -hmm. And then the higher your the higher mind your 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 higher self your many possibilities are open. So if your will is to heal, it you you will heal, but heal from from a higher self and not from a, a ego self of how you think it should be. Um, because it might be limiting mm -hmm. if you're saying to yourself, oh, this is how my body should be, uh, this is how I should look, or I'm feeling pain here. Um, maybe the pain is there to make you feel something. And, and if we can bring this thing to the surface, then it's, easy, it's easier to manage pain when it's brought to the surface. Because mm -hmm. then it's in our energy field and we can move it. Yes, because a lot of pain, then uh, the, the being sort of brings it to a deep uh, subconscious or unconscious level to bury it there and then stays there, right? Yeah. So bringing it up is a way for you to being able to deal with it as well and maybe let go of it or make sense of it, right? And how we bring it out is not necessarily by putting a story to it, mm -hmm. but a vibration, a density, it can be a color, it can so it's be a feeling. It's, more. A, it's a feeling, it's a sensing. 
but but that's the challenge you know like between the sensing and the story that you're creating in your in your head and that's what that's why i use uh, the prayer to um, quiet the mind mm -hmm. indeed and, indeed and use the breath to open the and the organs mostly like we, i work a lot with uh, giving space to the organs because the organs is, are really the the ones keeping us alive, the ones that have a brain. Mm -hmm. All the organs have a brain. So it's like we're limiting ourselves to this brain. But if we can open the many different brains and, and, and let them work together. Yeah, harmony, balance, homeostasis. Eh? Exactly. It's very beautiful indeed. And uh, the, the embodiment concept uh, is uh, very powerful indeed, you know, because, uh, you know, very often, particularly in the Western world, we are very much in the mind, very much in the story, very much in the ego, as you say. It. You know, we identify with one thing and, and the other. And when this thing doesn't work the way we think it should be working, then we suffer, right? And uh, so it's very important to have some practices to let go of the mind a little bit and feel, as you say, you know, this higher intelligence or deeper intelligence from the organs and from different aspects of our being. It's a very beautiful concept and uh, I think it's a very valid concept, particularly for the modern Western people, right? So prayer, etc. Back in the days, you know, prayer, maybe stuff like that was more common, whereas these days we need to have a practice, we need to learn to do that. Yeah. When I have, uh, when I work with people, I always see a, a resistance when I mention the prayer aspect of it. Uh, so uh, it's it's a bit challenging for me to kind of find ways to bring that into the practice. Uh, but once they allow that experience and, and sense and, and feel the difference in their in, in their being then they open up to it because it's, it's just a it's an experience yeah and a lot of people get triggered by it you know so yeah. that's why I say it's like find something that works for you just to quiet the mind it can be like uh, in yoga they have the hamsa breathing mm -hmm. Um, so, and there's so many, just finding just the perfect words that resonate with you. From uh, your experience of going through different healing modalities, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, to apply them directly to yourself, to then becoming a teacher and inspiring people on journeys to better health, etc. I mean, how important it is to learn different methodologies, because I, I think you also bring in in your practice different aspects, different methodologies, different things that you learned in life. Is that right? So when I work with people on the table, my favorite uh, modality to work with is fascia, fascia mm -hmm. therapy. Um, why is because there's so much uh, information in the fascia. Mm -hmm. uh, we, that's where we hold on everything, basically. Uh, and the fascia has many different layers. I can like uh, lymphatic drainage is fascia. Um, when I work with Rolfing, Rolfing is an, also a method I, I use. It's fascia therapy. Mm -hmm. um, so when somebody actually deals with pain, whether it be uh, mechanical pain or visceral pain, uh, working with the fascia always uh, releases a lot. And at the same time, um, the fascia is like the top layer of the skin. Uh, we can, in medical Qigong, just work a little bit above uh, and, and with the vibration, with the will, with my will and the will of the person, energetically, uh, whatever is surrounding in your field can, can also be uh, released, you know, and, uh, or changed. We, we can just change the energy. Other than that, I, I mix in pol polarity work, uh, therapeutic methods, you mm -hmm. know, like injury, shoulder injury, knee injury, uh, Shaking, shaking. Uh, so, so it, when something is deep inside the core, 
and I know there's like a blockage, I can feel it, but it's like from Jesus, we'll just shake it, shake it out and then bring it to the surface. And then, and then we can use the, the fascia, the fascia sense and open it up or bring energy to it. Oh, yeah. even, even if you know all these modalities, you have to listen to what the body needs. And, and the listening does not come from, um, from oh, I have, this is what I'm doing now, this is next, this is next, you know, in a protocol uh, method. The listening comes to what's happening right now, what's needing right now. So you might start with one type of treatment uh, in the modality, but it might change to another kind of treatment during the, during the session. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed, you know, this element of intuition is something that uh, I hear all the time, indeed, you know. I think uh, the kind of uh, therapies that are here in Copangan that include uh, some sort of physical aspect, some energetic aspect, some psychological aspect, they always are led and guided uh, through intuition. And that's, I think, is uh, not just learning the techniques that are very important, but also being able to apply them in the now and then. That's really the skill of the therapist as well, right? Exactly, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So being in tune with the, the, the client, feeling it, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a wonderful uh, work that you guys do, you know. Uh, me personally, I'm not so much of a body worker, but I really admire, you know, when people like uh, yourself have this strong intuition and can use different aspects of the body, because, you know, I really believe in mind-body-spirit connection. Mm -hmm. And I think, as you said, you know, trying to put everything in tune in balance, that's really the ultimate challenge for human beings, right? Yes, uh, it is the challenge, but also um, is to work together mm -hmm. as, a, as a therapist and an, as a client. When you come as a client and um, you come in to work, it's, not, it's like you don't come mm -hmm. in to let go. It's, it's uh, very important that you use your breath to stay present, that you focus on the hands touching you. Um, if you find yourself going away uh, in your head, it, it's okay. But coming back, coming back to the body is when you're getting body work. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean because uh, I, am, I receive massage weekly. And over the years, I learned to tune in with the massage therapist. I usually have Thai oil massage. And uh, I never get a bad massage. And I am active. I mean, I'm, I'm very soft and still, but my consciousness is there. Mm -hmm. So during the one hour massage that I receive, I'm not just uh, zoning out or having my stories. I'm totally present, maybe not 100%, but 80% of the time I'm present and there with the therapist. And I got this feeling that the therapist knows it as well. And that's why I always get a good massage. Exactly. Because they also don't zone out because they feel mm -hmm. I'm present. So we are both present. We co-create the massage in a way. It's not yes. just receiving it, but yes. you know, it's much more than that. It's beautiful, yes. isn't yes. it? And exactly. And you, like you said, you're co-creating. So the therapist is also receiving energy from you and, and giving you. And it's like feeding each other. Yeah. It's magic. You know, one of the great benefits of living here is indeed that we have so many therapists and some very experienced like yourself and, you know, different levels of kind of therapist. But, you know, if you like massage or body work, Copangani is certainly a place for it. But tell me a little bit more about your projects now, because, you know, uh, what is uh, why Copangan to start with and what you're planning to do in Copangan? This was never planned. I uh, came to Thailand uh, for work and uh, COVID happened at the same time. So I uh, just followed my intuition and decided to stay in Thailand. I felt safe. Um, and at the, I, also, I also was calling in change in my life when I was back in, in Montreal. It's like, I need some kind of excitement, something different, I don't know how, uh, but then, okay, so this is what I manifested, so I'm not going to say no to it, I'm going to uh, 
accept it. And then I found this uh, beautiful uh, community and uh, a lot of uh, healing opportunities on all level. And um, I definitely felt that my kind of uh, work would fit in well here. But uh, basically now I switched my, my body work that I used to do on my clients back home, I switched it to self-healing mm -hmm. uh, uh, teachings. So I teach my clients back home uh, specific self-healing methods and also here uh, I started teaching, uh, it's medical Qigong but uh, with a a bunch of other things, posturology, neuroplasticity knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm creating a little shala so that I can have in my little healing space. Uh, eventually, I would like to uh, get everything more uh, organized so I can have um, reach out more online because a lot of uh, good work is being done online. It's amazing. Well, Amma, thank you very much, you know, for uh, sharing with us today your journey uh, in life and also the beautiful gifts that you, you know, you give people, uh, your clients. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you <laughs> for uh, being interested and uh, for uh, making me also speak it out speak it out lovely the vibration of it all thank you